Okay, ready for you are. Uh, my name's Mark, I'm the director of the group of the film Tag. Um, obviously I directed the actors and worked with the editor to get the right feel of the film. I'm Scott, I worked uh, I was the editor for the film Tag. And I um, I'd work with the director to just flow the film, put fast cuts in it, music and color correction. Um, I'm Callum, I was the cinematographer of the film. I spent majority of the time on the camera. I was also in uh, some of the film scenes. Uh, I worked with the director and the editor to make sure we got all the shots in the right place, make sure everybody knew where they were, make sure every scene was how we wanted it to be. Um, I'm Sammy and I was a producer for the film Tag and I also did work with a director to make sure that everything was um, in place. Cool. Okay, do so you want to talk me through the concept and characters? Okay, the concept of the film is everyone knows the, the game Tag from when they were younger so the characters get in a conversation about it and because of their personalities, which I'll explain in a minute, they started a huge game of tag through the whole college, which got a bit silly, betrayal, you know, that happened, loyalty, like testing the loyalty between the characters. Um, my character was, we basically played ourselves just a more exaggerated version of the world. My character was Mark. Um, I, I'm, I, I like to push people's buttons. Um, as, as a character, <laughs> um, and I'm not, I'm not stable in hostile situations, which you'll see in the film, um, and I'm very competitive, which makes me, well, it starts the whole war and, and the tag, uh, yeah. Um, my character's uh, willing to sacrifice himself if need be, uh, he cares about his friends around him, and uh, my character is the instigator of most of the conversations in the class. Um, he's sly in a situation where he has to choose between himself and his friends. He'll majority of the time choose himself. Again, this is really exaggerated. Um, he isn't afraid of betraying someone, but for some reason doesn't understand why somebody would betray him. So he's sort of he's based around his own ego, really. is a bystander in the film, uh, she doesn't really care about all the boys, um, all the guys' issues in the story, she always tends to be ready to leave a situation. Uh, although she does have a mean side, she's known for causing a lot of rows in class. Uh, there's also another character called Alex, who's also a bystander, who gets caught up, he's very competitive, doesn't really <coughs> want to be competitive, but he'll join in anyway, if he has to. Uh, is Safian in there as well? Safian's not really in it much, he's, yeah. Do you want to watch your film? Yeah, go on then. Yes, Do you want to hit the lights? Yeah, go on. Yeah, go on. Yeah, go Does anyone remember Tack? Tick. It was called Tick. No, it's tough, isn't it? Tick. Do you really want to do this? Only joke you've got. Tack! There's only one way this is going down, Scott. That is for me getting away. Get off 
my leg. shots in then chase scenes would be good and the idea that we came up with the crime film didn't it was just it wasn't one scene there was no chase scene so we thought it'd be better for a lot of stuff in it. Mark did you write this? I did, did yeah. So in just in terms of your research it's evident that it's, it is a comedy mm. but what were your did you research for this film? Um, action adventure, um, action adventure, comedy adventure I looked at a lot of typical stoner comedies. I kind of liked the comedy in that. A lot of it wasn't in there, but they're typically popular about now. Uh, yeah. There's um, one film that just it reminds me a lot of. That's why I ask on genres. Uh, there's a horror in there that I know is by. Uh, there's a film called The Thing. Have yeah. you seen it? I haven't seen it. No. 
and it's um, the characters never know who the alien is because it takes on the, oh, right. the look of the person. So I kind of like had that horror element yeah. to me as well. And, uh, I would get that's. I wanted it to be like you didn't really know who was gonna get tagged at any moment. Just when the bit when Alex is stood and Scott comes behind him, that was like on the spot idea that we thought if we wanted to get a little scary effect in it. Because yeah. it was even though it was like for me watching this, even though it was it was funny, it was a comedy, I still seen a lot of horror elements in there mm. which I quite liked. Yeah. Especially like them POV shots with like Michael Myers. Mm. Especially with like Sammy just peering out. Yeah. Went out from there, <laughs> you know, unknowing. <laughs> it was really nice. It was a good match up. Um, yeah. In terms of writing scripts, did you find any problems, difficulties writing a comedy compared to maybe something else you've written from another genre? Well, comedy is subjective, isn't it? So I had to find something that I thought funny and I showed it to the group and they thought it was funny and they told me to take some jokes out. I just had to find the right mix of jokes instead of having jokes left, right and centre. It was a really good tempo with the edit. The cuts and the, the pacing of the film really worked. When you first uh, pitched that idea of Tag, I was thinking, oh, I don't know. And then these guys were like, no, it'll work. So, okay. But for editing, how did you find it? Did you have enough shots to, yeah, to um, keep that flow going, that tempo? We did have the issue with the light. So we had to cut that there. We're going to talk about that, but carry on talking about the pacing Um Just a lot of the cuts like, came together because well, uh, the actors did and that. So. Yeah. Especially like, the shot of um, where yourself is on the floor and then <laughs> all of a sudden you disappear and the door is just swinging <laughs> slowly. But it was so natural, it was like, you know, I was still expecting to be on the floor. Mm. The way it was edited. That were my idea as well. Cow, that was impressive. Yeah, I that that shot was really really nice, nicely done. Um, it was on camera. Oh, so you can. Um, some good work. Some good, you know, you use whip bands, uh, which I thought were cool. You know, experimenting with lots of loads of students trying to experiment with whip bands because they're not that easy to do and get right. And then Scott, you did well to actually edit them whip pans in and make it flow because that was a difficult thing to do because you had so many different shots um, what did you do on set Callum to ensure that you had similar exposure and focus in each scene how did you make sure that it kind of looked the same throughout each scene because you were filming in a college environment yeah. obviously you've got different lighting what did you try to do to ensure that it was continuous so it would be easy for Scott and yeah. there was um, there was a setting on the camera we had it was called um I can't remember what it was called now, but there was um, a, you had to keep it in focus in a certain way, and then it it can change like everything. It can change the light and it can change the blurriness. You have to make sure it's the exact same every time you film it. So before we shoot, we check the camera to make sure it was always in focus by zooming in and stuff. Okay. Cool. Um, it's a shame stuff isn't here because I actually thought the sound was decent. Yeah. I thought the sound was very decent in terms of. And edit. Uh, was the nut crack? Uh, the nut crackling. Was the knuckles crackling? Was that in post or was that strict? No, I, I actually did that. Again, <laughs> right. yeah, that just shows how the sound has been uh, used, yeah. and because I think sound plays a big part, and I think the choice of music was really, really good. It really flowed with the edit. Um, I, think, I mean, the voices were clear. You could hear everything that you were saying. There was no background noise. It really well recorded the sound. Highly, yeah. highly impressed. Did the staff use the task cams? Yeah. 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 Good. Good. Yeah, unit five and seven. Often. Uh, good. Um, other than that, um, obviously I'll talk to Sammy in a bit, but um, specifically, um, I'm going to direct this to each of you, but Scott, in terms of editing, what editing techniques did you look at in your contextual research and what are some of the techniques you applied in the edit? Um, fast cuts, um, quick scenes, you know, like just good takes of the um, film and I just obviously put the fast cuts in there to make it seem like an action film and very fast. And what, what did you watch any kind of research that showed you how how to ma how to make that pace of the edit? Did you research into the films? 
not many, and they are, I've, I've looked at some comedy films and like, maybe some die hard and that, but, yeah. Can you talk through the process of colour correcting? Uh, well, obviously we had to, I had to go each scene, each shot, and uh, just change, change the colour just to make it seem natural. And it just has to because the end, you know, the, uh, the funny moments, they were very orange and they weren't in the film, just everything that you have colour corrected, but each shot looked like the one previous, so it was well colour corrected. So you can just like go in depth how you did it in Premiere. Mm -hmm. We both kind of did it. Yeah. Kind of, um, which, what we're trying to get at is like what tools did you use within Premiere effects wise? It was curves. Yeah. I did curves. curves. And what within curves did you modify to get the look you wanted? Um, we moved up the white one, uh, moved down the red and up the blue so it seemed a little more natural instead of just really yellow or really Do you know why red. you moved the blue more than the rest? I think if you, what we went through lots of different, we were originally going to keep it red, but like a, a good red obviously, but then we decided if we make it blue, it, the, the white on the wall seemed white, not yellow or red or anything. That's, that's how it is. Um, natural light is blue, yeah. whereas like fluorescent, fluorescent light is orange. Yeah, yeah. So on the colour wheel, blue is opposite to orange. Yeah. So if it's really blue, you go more towards a warm colour like orange. So it's hard to tell. Well, obviously you've done that through trial and error and experimentation, which yeah. is good, which is what we encourage. Good. Um, Alan, um, in terms of your shots, um, obviously you did use a varied amount of shots, but what research did you do into shots before actually producing them? What contextual research did you do? Um, I went back to the work I'd done at the start of the year on every shot that we'd um, recorded, every shot that we'd looked at, and I have seen The Thing. Um, I went and watched The Thing, <coughs> and I went, uh, there was a scene in it where um, it's like a chest burster kind of thing, and I was just sort of looking at the POV they used in that, and I just wanted to try and see if I could use that, so I got a camera at home as well and I just sort of went through different shots to see what I could do with it. Nice. Really, really good. Um, final question for Mark from me. Um, obviously you were the director, what specific inspiration did you take for this piece and how did you use it? Edgar Wright is the director in general, that's where I got, that's where me and Callum thought of the whip pans because he uses a lot of whip pans in his. Um, went through Edgar Wright, a lot of his films um, like Scott said, Die Hard, with the action scenes, obviously they weren't as big as Die Hard, but they, the chase scenes were in it. Um, I looked at the Seth Rogen, and a lot of his, in This Is The End, there's a lot of chase scenes in that. I actually originally wanted a lot of prop use in it, but it was hard to do because of the, the ideas that came up with like crashing through tables and stuff, but we couldn't do that, obviously. Um, I just watched like Deadpool for example, that's more of an action than it is comedy but it does have a lot of comedy aspects in it, um, which is comedy action really, which is what we were trying to go for. So, yeah. That's it for me? Yeah, it kind of reminded me of a, a bit of Shaun of the Dead, that was kind of yeah. that comedy element of the uh, risk of danger. I was very impressed, all I can say. It's the table as well coming down in sh like yeah. Shaun of the Dead, great, great films, it's always like jumping the fence, yeah. and the fence always falls down when you're on top you know, there's a table falling down, yeah. it's quite nice. That's it, for me? Yeah, well yeah. done. Yeah, well done, well done. Yeah, excellent. Can I put that on there, Green Street